All right. Well, I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorite parts of this conference is the lightning talks, because we get to hear from the community about how we're using Vue. So my name is Karen Bainey. I am a senior consultant at Valore Partners in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And I have been using Vue for about three years now, a little bit over three years. My client that I'm working at, I've been out there for the full three years, has multiple large-scale Vue apps. And so at this point in our Vue journey, optimization is extremely important to um, getting our users to use these applications and to make sure that they can be efficient in their job. A large part of our applications are internal facing, so we want to make sure that we're helping the employees be as productive as they can. So we started an initiative to look at performance and optimization. And the first thing we did was we looked at um, lazy loading, which is surprisingly easy once you realize all that's involved with it. So I have this website. And uh, yeah, these are my dogs. But I also, they're my coworkers, right? I work from home a lot, so I see them a lot. So they're always on my mind. So I have this little app here that toggles between Bella and Daisy May. And right now, these components are just being loaded as normal. But because my default is Bella when I hit this home page, um, I can actually improve my performance if I were to lazy load daisies. And the things, type of things that you want to lazy load are things that aren't visible initially. So simply to lazy load a component, that's it. You change your import statement to const in the name of your component, so daisy profile. You add a fat arrow function, and then you use the dynamic import syntax. And then over here is just the, um, the, the same component that you're already using. Now there's this Webpack magic comment, as you'll hear it called a lot of times, that tells Webpack what name you want to give to the chunk. So otherwise, Webpack just assigns whatever it thinks. And when you start to look at your disk folder, you're like, I don't know what package that is. Or if you're trying to do bundle analyzation, um, you're like, I don't know which thing to look at. So it's a good idea to um, name your chunks, which sounds really weird, right? <laughs> Who names their chunks? So in Webpack, we do. So some typical things that are good candidates for lazy loading components are tabs, modals, side panels, and toggled content. In addition to lazy loading components, we can lazy load routes. And this is like super hard to do. Um, all we have to do is go into our route. And we switch it from the normal import syntax to the dynamic import. And now these routes will be lazy loaded. Again, I'm using a Webpack chunk name here. Um, because the way my application is structured, it actually makes sense for me to put my dogs into the same chunk. Or, well, house would make more sense. But in our case, it would be the same chunk. Um, in your application, you need to think about how this code is going to be downloaded once it's minified to make that determination. You may need them to be in separate chunks. So let's just save this. So now when I go to my Bella page or my Daisy May page, neither one of those are downloaded until I hit that route. So if I started out on a different page or my home page isn't using that, um, it would not be downloaded until it's used. So there you go. 
Now, here's an example of the disk folder. So before we did the lazy loading of the components or the um, routes, since I put them both in this dogs chunk, you can see over here there's no dogs chunk. And over here, after I did the lazy loading, now I have these dog chunks, <laughs> which really, it's funny. Okay. Um, in my example here, there's some other things. You're like, whoa, hey, I don't have view in a separate chunk. How'd you do that? Well, that's my bonus material, your incentive to go check out my GitHub repo, um, because in my view config JS, they actually show how to split out view as a separate chunk. And what's really great about this is if you have other third party libraries, especially if they're not used across your whole site, or if your vendor's chunk is getting really huge, and Webpack will tell you it's two, 244 KB or more, you need to change it. Well, I have that sample on there. And there's just one last thing in the Babel config, you need to turn comments on. So it has to be comments true in order for that Webpack chunk name to work. So uh, that's it for me. I'm Karen Bainey. You can snap a picture of this to see my uh, GitHub repo for this demo. And I hope you uh, learned a little bit more about optimization. <laughs>